everyone i hope you're doing well in this video we are gonna find planet density for simple cubic planes okay so let's quickly get started first of all we should know the formula that we are gonna use for the planet density calculation and we know that the planet density is given by planet density is given by following formula or planet density by sigma sign okay that is equals to that the thing i was gonna write here was correct but <laughs> there is no enough space to accommodate all of the words that's why i'm using here the symbol for the planet density which is sigma here and uh, that is equals to net number of atoms lying on the plane for which you are gonna calculate the planet density the plane under consideration for okay so net number of atoms lying on the plane divided by the area of the plane and let me write here in the subscript of uh, planar density as h k n l here i wrote h k l um, this is the representation for the miller indices of a plane just to show that it would be different for different planes and yeah this is the formula this is the basic formula that we will be using in each of the cases now, now first of all we draw the plane this is the cube this is the x direction this is the y direction and this is the z direction this is the origin and since all of the indices are positive so that is why I took this point as origin and these are the axis lines. As I told earlier, axis lines are really important in drawing the plane because we are concerned with intercepts. Next is to draw the plane and in rough work, we'll do the inverse process. Okay, These are the indices. This is X index, Y index and Z index. Taking inverse Taking the inverse gives us the actual intercepts of the plane that will help us to draw them on the in the cube inside the cube. So inverse of one is one, inverse of one is again one, inverse of zero is infinity. This is x intercept one, y intercept one, z intercept is infinity. First of all, we draw we draw those points which are not infinity. Okay. So we'll take x and y first. Since x intercept is 1, what we do is starting from origin to the other corner of the unit cell along the x direction means value 1. 1 means from one corner to other corner. In which direction? x direction. Starting from origin. Starting from origin to the other corner. This is one of the point on the, uh, on the plane. This is one of the point on the plane. Next point is 1 for y. Again, starting from origin, that's the difference when we talk about planes. We have to start from origin every time. But in directions, the situation is different. Um, okay, Because in intercepts are a different thing from position. From starting from origin to the other corner of the unit cell along the y direction. This point, this is another point on the plane. Now, what about the next index, which is infinity here? In case of infinities, what we do is we draw parallel lines from the already determined points on the plane, okay, along the direction which has infinity as the intercept. It means that these are the two already determined points on the plane, and we'll draw parallel line from each of these points along the z direction, okay. So, not on the axis line, but from the points which were already determined, okay. So, this is the z direction, the vertical one. We will draw parallel lines to z direction, which is this line, to the other corner of the unit cell. You will stop at the other corner of the unit cell. This is another point on the plane. Here as well, you will draw parallel line to z direction, which is this, up to the other corner of the unit cell. This is the end point. Now, what we do is we will join these points together. this diagonal plane 
you can imagine it inside your room that how it would look like uh, is one zero one one zero plane. This is one one zero plane in a simple cubic structure. Okay, now let's calculate area of it. After calculating area, we'll find out the net number of atoms that lie on this plane. So for area, we know that this these are the axis directions. All of the lengths which of the cube which are parallel to axis direction or A. So this length is A, this length is A, this length is A, this length is A. This length is not A, it is different and we can find it out, we can calculate it using the Pythagoras theorem. Uh, this length is A and this length is A as well and this length is C, hypotenuse. And we know that the angle between X and Y direction is 90 degree here that you cannot see here but we know that that is why we can uh, use that information um, x angle between x y and z direction is always 90 degree um, so Pythagoras theorem says that the hypotenuse this is the hypotenuse okay squared equals um, this base square plus the perpendicular square so c squared equals 2a squared we want C only, that is why we will take under root on both sides. Under root 2 and A will come out because square and under root cancels out and it's C equals under root 2A. And this is the length, another length of the plane. This was the another length of the plane, plane that we wanted to know and we know this plane. So length into width gives us the area of the plane. Area of 110 plane equals a multiplied by c which is a into under root 2 a under root 2 a squared this is the area of the plane okay now let's calculate the net number of atoms lying on it and for that purpose we know that there is an atom on each of the corner of the unit cell of a simple cubic structure so there is an atom here there is an atom here there is an atom here, there is an atom here. Okay, this is not accurate representation of um, how the atoms are there. Okay, like whether they are touching here or not, or these are, this is not accurate drawing. Okay, keep that in mind. Um, we just want to know the contribution of atom to the plane, and that accurate drawing is not needed here. So, that is something that I am already telling you and that is something that you shouldn't be um, concerned about because they will not mark you on this. You can even see in books they have not shown the exact, um, you know, the exact phenomena occurring inside the cube. That's not necessary. You only have to mention those things which you need in order to calculate certain things as you are not even drawing these other atoms because they are not needed they will just complicate the drawing we want to uh, make this drawing understandable and we can see here this is a rectangular shape can you see it? this is a rectangular shape with these two lengths are equal and we have these and it could be proved that the angle between these two lines is 90 degree here as well okay these two lines making up the plane is 90 degree here as well and the total angle of the circle or atom is 360 so if you find out the ratio of this thing to the total it will become 1 by 4 again as with the previous case um, it is 1 by 4 here 1 by 4 here 1 by 4 here 1 by 4 here okay we do not need to do the same process again because we know here that there are the same angles if the angle would have been different the contribution would have been different but the shape says that there is a 90 degree angles here so 1 by 4 by this atom 1 by 4 by this 1 by 4 by this 1 by 4 so the net capital N is equals to 4 because they are all same multiplied by 1 by 4 that, that is something that you can do as well 4 4 cancels out and we have net one atom lying on the plane now the planar density planar density for 110 plane is equals to n over a n is 1 here as well divided by under root 2a squared okay and 
we know that this is the planet density in terms of atomic uh, in terms of sorry lattice lattice this is the planet density in terms of lattice parameter now let's calculate it for uh, in terms of atomic radius and for that purpose we'll put a equals 2r right into this equation so we get 2r square or uh, 2r whole squared 1 over 4 under root 2 r square so this is the planet density in terms of atomic radius okay this is really simple and now let's do it for triple one plan